Um, dear Minister, you are a diplomat and you became sort of a very big country. I am not diplomat and I am uh, till... Um, but, but you are the senior most of, most of my colleagues. Since, since 2004, I am yes. Prime Minister of a very small country, a member of the European Union. So my question is, uh, dear colleague, uh, we know that uh, a few weeks ago, Sergei Lavrov, who was appointed in 2004, same year as myself, he was here in, in Delhi. Uh, can you tell us a little bit the justification of what Russia is doing uh, in uh, Ukraine? Uh, we heard in Europe always a denazification uh, and then also to prevent the genocide of Russians in, uh, in, in uh, Ukraine. So really, the justification of, of such a military intervention uh, after the 24th of, January, of uh, February this year, how does he explain it to you? He is a diplomat. He was uh, represented Russia in the Soviet Union before uh, in, in New York. He is minister since uh, 17, 18 years, and I think everything that Russia is doing in Ukraine is against, really against, international law and also the charter of the UN. Thank you. Well, look, uh, if you want to know the justification of Russia, that's for Sergei Lavrov to do. I'm prepared to justify what uh, India's views are on Ukraine or any other matter. Uh, and uh, in terms of what justification he has offered, I think he's engaged many of you in Europe probably more on this subject than he's engaged us. So I don't think I have anything particularly uh, new to contribute uh, to that. But again, you know, look, I, I do want, uh, I recognize today that the conflict in Ukraine is the dominant issue, if not among the dominant issues of the day. And it's a dominant issue not just in terms of principles and values alone, also in terms of the practical consequences of it, the knock-on effects. Uh, you have, I mean, in this part of the world, uh, not just here, in Africa, in other parts of Asia, uh, people are seeing the conflict play out in terms of higher energy prices, in terms of uh, food inflation. Uh, in terms of disruptions of, of uh, various kinds. So uh, the truth is uh, there is really nobody who wants to see this conflict. I mean, this, there, there will be no winners out of this conflict. Uh, so, but I, I also stress, and I say this to you because both of you are my European colleagues, uh, and I understand that at this moment uh, this would probably occupy you to the exclusion of almost everything else. But there is also a world out there, and I'm very glad that you're sitting here in India, uh, because it would remind you that uh, there are equally pressing issues in other parts of the world. I mentioned Afghanistan. I mentioned the challenges uh, which we faced in Asia. Uh, and if I were to put those very challenges in terms of principles, I mean, when, when rules-based order was uh, under challenge in Asia, the advice we got from Europe is do more trade. At least we're not giving you that advice. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, and in terms of, uh, you know, Afghanistan, I mean, please show me which part of the rules-based order uh, justified, uh, you know, what, what the world did there. So, so let's, let's uh, I think, uh, see this in the right context. Uh, as, you know, our position is that we all have to find some way of returning to diplomacy and dialogue. And to do that, the fighting must stop. I think that is really the focus of what we are trying to do. Uh, uh, let me uh, move away from Europe to another.